uh, the United States to, considering that, like, we are the fucking imperial core. We are living in the imperial core, and we can't even reap the rewards of all that fucking bloodshed, okay? Are you kidding me? Are you fucking joking? Like, yeah, no shade is just a catchphrase. Yes, I talk about, I say that a lot, yes. To have a child in this country, it's expensive. Right. I'm 21. I could never afford to have a child. I can't, I can afford my health insurance that is expensive but once a year twice a year go to the doctor but that's about it but i can't afford to go to a hospital and have a child we can't even and afford to go to the hospital I, don't even, I can't afford housing in this state in this country I can't yeah go. i can't even afford i can't even afford to go to the doctor in general if i get actually sick sick like i'm f people that make a hundred thousand dollars a year you get cancer you're bankrupt where do you uh, work uh, right now, I just got back from Europe uh, doing a study abroad, so this is my first day back, so I don't have a what job right studying? now. What were you studying? I study human rights, actually. Okay, cool. Study human rights and international studies. And where, where were you studying? You know, that's the problem. You should have studied human wrongs, motherfucker. <laughs> I studied human rights and human wrongs. <laughs> Barcelona. Uh, like a university? Yeah, in IAU is the university. It's my final semester, so I was just... Fit Dude, look at him. Dude, He he's just like, he's completely conceited. He just now turned around and he's just like, oh, what did you study? Like, shut the fuck up, Steven. Go back to the main conversation. Finishing, I've already finished my degree. I was just doing, like, my electives, basically. Okay. And traveling. He's um, just doing yeah, small I talk. I human rights at SMU, actually. Okay. Yeah. So, um, and you said you can't afford a house. Oh, but no, who no. can afford a house at, like, <laughs> I'm 23. Who can afford a house at... 23 unless you're at mark uh, or you said you can't afford a place to live uh so where yeah, do you well i could i could afford a place to live if i was willing compared to you five years ago myself. it was very easy for me if for five years ago i could go bartend like which is what i normally do uh -huh. um and i can afford a decent place for like eight oh my man is caked up he's a bartender bro 700 a month in dallas it's very hard to find like to get a place that's not cockroach infested and like falling down i'd have to have like two or three roommates which is normal um but, I mean, I've been here my entire life, and it's just getting, uh, I've seen the change firsthand. Um, right. We bought our house for $80,000. Uh, that neighborhood's about $400,000 now because of these multi-corporations coming yeah, in. Like and Vanguard up and BlackRock. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. We'd probably uh, agree, you know, Elizabeth Warren said they should be too big to fail, but I don't think any company is too big to fail. They should fail. Look, he's just trying to drive, like, uh, he's, he's trying to use his resentment, his understandable and justifiable resentment against the Democratic Party. To just like cut out uh anything that is not oppositional anymore because like he recognizes that this dude knows what the fuck he's talking about so because of that reason he's like all right well let's look for you know let's look for common ground here because you're gonna fucking uh you know clap my ass cheeks in in uh, the the abortion conversation that what this is a roe v wade combo like why are you talking about elizabeth warren dude did she get an abortion who gives a fuck yeah she sucks um, yeah, I think, yeah, but I understand where you're going with this uh, situation, and I also believe I that, I, well, I believe that uh, when a corporation gets uh, past a certain threshold of money, they should be checked and limited by the government, because um, I believe it was Thomas Jefferson, Jefferson has a quote where he talks about if uh, the power goes towards, if the power goes is directed towards the banks. I wish you could, you can look it up later if you want. You probably won't, because I know you like to nitpick your things. Nothing against you. No, but, this will be totally um, unedited. But you can, uh, I really appreciate everything you've a, been saying. There's a thing about Very Thomas helpful. Jefferson that talks about, um, <laughs> uh, when the money is like goes, you can look up Thomas Jefferson bank quote, I believe. And when, basically when the banks, if they're given too much money and by banks, it's, uh, uh, Capital, capital interest mm -hmm. uh, goes above the people. It's no longer a democracy, and it's true. Uh, this is. No, I, cer I certainly this agree. Is, uh, when, um, we really pride ourselves on being a democracy, but I high key, I high key don't believe that he said this. Does he actually say this? What? Private banks. If the American people ever allow private banks to control the issue of the currency first by inflation, then by deflation, the banks and corporations that will grow up around them will deprive. The people of all property until their children wake up homeless on the uh, continent their fathers conquered. I believe that banking institutions are more dangerous. Behind you. Yeah. I believe that banking institutions are more dangerous to our liberties than standing armies. The issuing power should be taken from banks and restored to the people to whom it properly belongs. Um, that was, uh, that is, 
what is it other attributions none known oh wait it's the quotation is at least partly spurious see comments below quotation often cited as being in the 1802 letter to secretary treasury albert gallatin and or published in the debate over the recharter of the bank bill the reason why i say that it's probably not uh real is because was there was there even an alternative to to private banking institutions at the time i feel like there wasn't right i mean i don't i don't know i might be wrong but I do feel like that was just the the norm at the time. There was nothing. There was no alternative to that. All uh, all matter of money basically was uh, controlled through uh, through the private institutions, and they would like give their own form of like tender too. It's not like it's not like they were fucking greenback dollary dues back then. You know what I mean? Like, um, I can see it. I can see that, but. No, he wanted to create a federal bank. Jefferson also said the Constitution should be thrown out and rewritten every 20 years or it would be tyranny prior generations or for those living today. Yeah. Bank of England was the government, right? No, I'm talking about, uh, I'm talking about like uh, early uh, development of the United States where they literally could not figure out that multiple slurp juices mean that you can have three different apes if you use the slurp juice on the single ape like our founders did not know about the slurp juices okay so i do kind of find it stupid to have a conversation around uh you know what their understanding of of banking looked like when they could not comprehend the fundamental truth that a slurp juice can create three different apes as long as you mix and match they still don't get it okay um <laughs> What the fuck is a slurp juice? Well, you don't get it either, friend. Don't worry about it. Beyond money. <laughs> okay, anyway, um but let's say he said it, okay? It's a good it's a good uh, concept anyway, but uh, let's see what Steve no, I think we can uh, find common ground there in the sense that I right can find common ground with a lot of right-wing people, but yeah. uh, our ideals are against each other because there are certain well, things Hold on, can, that I, can you let me speak? Yeah, yeah, is, yeah. Uh, I, I think we're uh -oh. saying the same thing on too big Getting to fail. I think big banks want to privatize profits and socialize mm -hmm. losses, right? And I think you're saying pick a lane, so where we won't find common ground is more so socialize well, the banks, well, whereas I'm saying... what do you mean about socialized losses? Can you expand on that? Well, they get bailed out by the taxpayer once they screw up their own um, banking practices, right? It's their insurance. In other words, when the bank has a problem, it's their insurance. Yeah, dude, you're definitely an Austrian economist, brother. Totally. Like, I love when, I love when like these right wing shitheads say stuff like that, as though they are like legitimately, like there is no such thing as uh, in in modern day contemporary America. There is not a singular fucking real Austrian economist right winger. Okay, they they are completely funded. By these corporations, the corporate overlords, why the fuck would they ever legitimately have some kind of opposition beyond just simply talking about uh, how, uh, you know, these corporations should be made to fail? It's bullshit. It's complete fucking bullshit. This idea that, like, it's the natural ebbs and flows of the economy. Like, all of these companies should fall apart. First of all, there's also so many horrifying consequences to, some, to, to that, to allow certain... Um, you know, certain businesses to fail, right? Um, what you, what we should do instead is, uh, instead of allowing them to fail, bail them out with taxpayer money, but then also purchase them outright and nationalize them. If you can't fucking run your business appropriately uh, in the in the private sector and it's too big to fail, that means it's too big to be private. Okay, if there is a natural uh, barrier of entry into uh, a said industry, okay. If there's a natural barrier of entry into your said industry, if your industry re relies on, uh, you know, government build infrastructure to a certain percentage that we could maybe uh, calculate, then yeah, there should be way, way more regulation surrounding it. Or at the very least, the government should completely control it if they bail it out. It's our money. We should control it. Insured <sighs> by the federal government. Yeah, yeah. And so that's the taxpayer, and that's people who really shouldn't. Even people who are middle class, people yeah. who are lower middle class, even, taxes shouldn't that, bail even, even right? Crowder's like the FDIC uh, insurance is actually bad and wrong. OK, dude, well, then, like, we can't do banking then. You know, there needs to be guarantee. There needs to be some level of guarantee. Like, I'm not against the the certain uh, ways that we have decided uh, the, the government should operate. The, like, there there needs to be some level of regulation unless 
who just want you know multiple fucking slurp juices to uh to <laughs> Multiple slurp juices to basically, uh, you know, create multiple different apes as long as you use them, right? Like, and, and help people understand that. I'm just saying, like, the, the whole problem with the fucking crypto landscape is a lack of regulation. There's no central force that, that uh, controls anything in that circumstance. And it's all volatile. It's all built around confidence. And when you don't have some kind of uh, regulation surrounding it, when you don't have, like, an established... Uh, uh, rule set to go by you're gonna you're gonna get into a shitload of uh, problems uh, there's going to be uninsured securities that you're trading that end up destroying you okay i've listened to you for a while but especially when you talk about shit you have no idea about the original ape is consumed in that scenario you're spreading fake info <gasps> no are you serious so the multiple slurp juices create a new ape, but you actually lose your original ape in that situation? Dude, this is why the crypto markets fell apart, dude. I swear to God. This is why all the stable coins are being destroyed. I've been... Un I'm sorry. I did not know that I was spreading misinformation about slurp juices this entire fucking time. Even past that... Do we agree on that? I do agree on that. There you go. But, even pa but even past that, what, what the hell do we get as taxpayers even without that? We're one of the richest nations in the world. We don't have our free health care. We don't have a public transport system that's adequate. Dallas, we have a public transport system, mm -hmm. but come on, it's bullshit. There is, none. Um, is there no public nope. transit in Arlington? It, for most of the U.S., there's like compared to Europe, like Europe, you don't need a car, uh, really. You can survive quite easily without one. Uh, for most of the U.S., if you don't have a car, you are struggling. You don't have a life. You don't, you don't have the ability to have a social life. It's difficult to get to work. Um, the U.S. is quite big. Um, we don't invest at all in... We don't invest in the social good, really, with any uh, of our tax money. Our tax money is... Uh, it goes to. I don't really know that I, I, I agree with that. I mean, you're talking about many, many trillions of dollars spent in the war on poverty, and just we just talked about multi-trillion yeah, dollar but you're infrastructure in Dallas bills right now, and you see the homeless people in every corner. No, I agree. I just don't think that the and, federal many trillions have been spent on the war on poverty. Okay. Nobody said the way that the government is handling uh, poverty is adequate. As a matter of fact, it's inadequate and wrong and horrible. That's kind of the whole point. You can agree that the government is failing uh, the American citizens, okay? You can agree on that. I think many people do. Republicans love using that energy, however, um, to, to uh, channel it into like, further reactionary goals that uh, abolish uh, the all matter of, of control and regulation at the behest of major corporations, starving the beast, if you will. spending on the war on poverty works just like the war on drugs hasn't worked oh well, yeah i don't think throwing work. more money at it helps so, so i think that the you, problem well, is so corruption. then what are you going for well i think the problem there right is we both agree there's corruption there's a lot of money that's being spent it's not being spent in the right way mm -hmm. i don't necessarily think that all those things are fundamental human rights but i certainly would argue that the money is being spent very poorly i mean there's a lot of money being spent we have a spending problem and it's not going anywhere useful but i wanted to get back to kind of roe v wade uh and the subject let me ask you this because there are people for spend it on like Dude, I just, I mean, it's just basic conservative shit. Like, basic conservative talking point is like, the government sucks, right? We agree. Okay, well, then there should be less government. Like, no, there should be the correct uh, kind of government. You don't destroy a system uh, by letting it fail further, okay? Specifically because it's currently not doing what it's supposed to. Especially when there are examples of governments doing significantly better uh, with respect to social safety nets that they have created. Uh, look to the Nordic social Demo uh, democracies. Obviously, there are still uh, many failures there as well. But in comparison to the United States of America, they are doing a significantly better job. So much so that whenever you bring this up, American uh, conservatives will turn around and say the most racist shit by being like, well, Norway is white. That's why they're doing it. White people know how to do uh, social democracies, whereas you know black and brown people don't. Like, that's just straight they, they have nothing. They have no counter to that. So they turn around and they just like move to the, the spiritual realm, the, the idealistic realm, and, and basically argue from the position that like, you know, Nazis argued. Uh, but yeah, uh, I love that he circled back to Roe v. Wade when he realized that he was about to be destroyed in another avenue of discussion. Real, let me just get owned in one avenue energy. Yeah. For example, those, we had four. Uh I mean, it's basically like fucking stating that. Um, 
you know, you're if you're living in a fucking apartment and your plumbing is broken, the conservative comes in and says, let's burn the apartment down. No, let's just fix the plumbing, dude. What the fuck? Oh, it's too much. We're spending too much money on this apartment trying to fix this plumbing. Let's just burn it down entirely. And then build a parking lot over it. That's just how we should do it, I think. That's the best way to go. It's insane. Poor people there, you know, African-Americans, who had how a How do you know they're poor just because they're African-American? I said four. Oh, four. They said four. Ooh, careful right with your there. presumptions. No, um, I so thought I, I misheard you. It wasn't a presumption. It okay. sounded four and four. There were four African-Americans there. The number four. four. Oh, you said four. Okay. <laughs> what the fuck? Who said, who uses this, bro? Who the fuck? You, who says, like, there are African-Americans there? Donald Trump and Steven Crowder. Maintenance can't unclog my toilet because my turd was late term, Sag. Oh, ew. I didn't. What were you yeah. asking? Well, thanks. Is, um, you know, they, so they, their point of view was, okay, they were pro-choice. Um, and then she was a mother of four. And when I asked her about the Texas heartbeat bill, she said, well, yeah, of course, after heartbeat, because she had done an ultrasound, she said, that's a, life, that's a separate heart. Whose heart are you stopping? My question to you is this, because I know you're coming in hot and... and, and I'm not coming in hot. I'm really speaking like uh, I'm not coming in hot. I'm not but being aggressive. You, do you understand the other perspective finish, where someone says? Yeah, he's doing the. This is the other. This is the third conservative uh, tool in the tool belt, which is, oh, uh, you're triggered. I triggered you. Uh, you triggered. Like no, neither of them are triggered. Uh, I think you're just trying to say that and maybe invoke some kind of feeling out of them because you've been fucking, you know, you're not doing a good job with this conversation. I mean, technically, he is doing a good job of the conversation because he's able to deflect away from the main point of view, the main perspective uh, that, that where he is getting owned on the Roe v. Wade side. Because I guess the ultimate position he had is, do people really know what Roe v. Wade is? It's not even about, like, just uh, – it, it's about – it's basically about showcasing how stupid these libtards are that are, like, triggered about Roe v. Wade because, like, they don't even know what it actually is. Um So now he's like moving, he's just like flailing. Someone does certainly half, more than half the country believe it a limitation at some point that at a certain point, it's no longer your own body. That's their yeah. Limitations are fucking stupid. Again, 93% of abortions happen in the first trimester. 6% of abortions happen in the second trimester, usually because uh, people can't capture, people can't figure out that they are actually, uh, uh, you know, pregnant, unfortunately, as a consequence of inadequate health care. Obviously, that if you want to eliminate second trimester abortions, that's one way that you could do that is by uh, offering uh, sex ed and also uh, cheap, accessible, free pregnancy tests at uh, these these healthcare facilities. OK, and the third trimester abortions are at one percent, less than one percent. And almost all of those third trimester abortions are abortions that happen to people that wanted to carry that pregnancy to term is incredibly traumatic. The idea of like trying to limit that. Uh, when it's a conversation between you and your fucking doctor is really, really stupid. The, the notion that people, the notion that people are running around and like getting fucking pregnant specifically so they can feel like they're having like a murder inside of them, carrying a pregnancy to six months only to then turn around and get an abortion just for funsies is a psychotic one. But unfortunately, it's one that conservatives have basically created. Like it's a it's a it's a fake thing that conservatives are able to hammer on over and over again to make it seem as though that is the reality to, to vilify the the hundreds of thousands of women that have uh, undergone this medical procedure and to make it seem like they themselves are doing the exact same thing. It's stupid, incredibly stupid. It's not a thing that happens. But even if it was for the one psycho, okay, even if it was for the one person who's like, I am personally getting pregnant so I could get the, th the third trimester carrying a fucking thing inside of me, letting it grow to the third trimester so I can get a recreational abortion. I'm still not in favor of fucking limiting that uh, uh, so that like people that are, are uh, going to uh, force to forcibly carry a pregnancy, a stillbirth pregnancy to term. And then even like it complicate their own, uh, uh, you know, or, or put themselves in harm's way for that. Uh, I'm not going to prevent them from getting an abortion in the third trimester because there's some like one fucking weirdo that wanted to get a recreational abortion or whatever the fuck. Argument, and that's why the Supreme Court has said it's bad law, and states should have the right to will enforce the, those regulations. Well, the, can I, can I? No, no, I'll let the okay. woman speak. Please. Will the fetus survive? 
if it's outside of your body. So you viability is not a good argument either. And the reason why I'm saying that specifically is because these guys are demons. Okay. I get the viability one. It's like a very normal thing to feel. You're like, well, if there's no viability outside of the fucking womb, then like, what the fuck? You know, uh, then that's not a baby that's like reliant on me to survive at this moment. Right. Um, the, the viability outside of the, uh, the vi viability outside of the womb argument isn't great because like medical technology has made it so that like, uh, the viability outside of the womb has gotten, uh, the, the time frame in which like there's viability outside of the womb for a fetus has gotten shorter and shorter. You know what I mean? You don't have any children, right? No, I don't. Cause a baby won't survive outside of the body. No, it's relying on your body. Right. A baby survive. won't survive outside of the body, but I mean a baby delivered naturally yeah. won't survive outside well, of the body. I mean, well, we're talking about it, fetus right now. I'm talking a about a fetus. So what changes from, let's say, eight weeks and six days, or sorry, eight months, four, you know, three weeks, six days, to nine months? Is it just inside, outside the womb that makes it a person? Well, one's a fetus and one's a baby. But why is one a fetus if it's, it's eight, not, if it's just it's one day shy? Yeah, he's getting into the weeds of, like, the idiotic conversation, specifically because he knows it's a losing battle to talk about the autonomy of the woman. Always turn it back to the autonomy of the woman. Whenever there is a conversation that revolves around abortion, Republicans are going to engage in the most like derailing semantics bullshit you can get into, as I said, to deflect away from the main conversation, which is the limiting of the already existing human being and their personal liberties. You are denying someone, you are denying someone a medical practice, okay? You are denying someone from getting a medical procedure because you don't feel like they should be able to. It's completely selfish. It is insane. And it's also violent, too. I have nine months. It's not relying well, not on your body to your umbilical cord. What do you think about the violinist example where you establish it as a human life? It's still about the autonomy of the woman. It, it doesn't. I don't I don't like that. I don't I, I don't like the violinist example because the violinist is like a full blown uh, a person with experiences you know what i mean and that's why it's uh it's an outdated uh it's an outdated uh, uh argument like it's an outdated uh, logic game or whatever what is it called not a logic game god damn it a, a thought experiment sorry it's an outdated thought experiment that has been uh, dunked on numerous times oh sorry eight months four you know three weeks six days to nine months is it just inside outside the violent yes it is violent yes forcing a uh, forcing a woman to carry a pregnancy to term is violent, especially when there are medical complications that come along with this. Okay? You have helped me a lot with this video and your commentary and talking both to my, both my hardcore lib friends and a right-wing religious friend. Thank you for covering the way to speak to people. Yeah. Um, it is violent. It is, of course it's violent. I, I, if you are, if you are forcing someone, if you're denying a medical procedure to someone, uh, uh, because you just don't, because like a tiny fraction of the fucking country believes that this is like not a good thing to do, then yeah, that's violence. What is that? Would you not consider it to be violent if I decided like, um, uh, the Hasanabi religion, I've, I've established a Hasanabi religion. It's like Scientology. We've reached like, you know, peak fucking, uh, uh, masses. All right. There's so many people. Uh, there are so many people now that believe in the Hasanabi religion, and part of that religion is that uh, I think that insulin should not be offered to people that have diabetes. I think you should pray, uh, you should pray the gay away, and you should pray the diabetes away. Now, I have been able to also command massive swaths of the population to be able to vote a certain way. So then the Republican Party decides, yeah, you know what? Fuck insulin is going to be a part of our bill. Would you not say that that's incredibly violent to be able to stop people from being able to get insulin? It should be naturally occurring in your body. God is literally punishing you uh, if you are not able to generate insulin in your body. God is punishing you, and you should be able to deal with it. Uh, you're too fat. You should be able to lose weight and deal with it appropriately and adequately. Also, if you want to get a gastric bypass, if you're too fat, if you're obese, and you want to get a gastric bypass, I think you shouldn't do that either. I'm literally forbidding you from getting a gastric bypass to save your life in that circumstance as well. I'm closing off all the avenues that... Uh, that you can get to to become healthy, okay? And then I turn around and say, just get skinny, forehead. Just get skinny. What's wrong? Just get skinny. Even if you're type 1 diabetes or uh, where you, like, naturally, since birth, are not able to produce uh, enough insulin and you die, okay, uh, if you're, you know, if you eat any kind of sugar, just avoid sugar. Just avoid sugar.
please just avoid sugar. Sorry. Um, you know, it doesn't matter. You should have been born not uh, a diabetic. So that sounds insane when I put it like that. Okay. And you can try to moralize it by saying like, well, you know, it's about health. And maybe some instances it's like people, uh, you know, it's, it's personal choices. And, and, you know, we shouldn't actually be doing this uh, medical procedure on people because we're like getting them to uh, we're, we're basically encouraging being fat in this circumstance, you know, just don't eat any sugar whatsoever. What the fuck's wrong with you? If I can get enough people to fucking believe in that and I can get the Republican Party, if I lobby the Republican Party uh, and, and, and they push for it. They can basically get five fucking unelected uh, Supreme Court justices that were appointed by two Republican presidents that didn't even win the fucking popular vote to turn around and say, no, we're not going to do that. Like, we're not allowing insulin to, for people to, we're not allowing people to get insulin. If you're diabetic, you just fucking die. Sorry. That's what this argument looks like. That's precisely what this argument is. Any kind of conversation around, like, the actual, uh, uh, the, the humanity of the fetus itself is a silly conversation. It's a medical procedure that women should be able to get. You can't sit there and be like, sorry, I want to, I want to force the federal government to bring this issue back to the states where I know that the Republican Party already has, like, uh, majority control in, in these states, regardless of whether or not they actually uh, win these elections because of the way that these districts are gerrymandered. And I want to go against the wishes of the individuals. In most states in the United States of America, if not all states in the United States of America, this issue does not reach more than 30% support. It's fucking crazy. It's completely insane. It is undemocratic as fuck. It is unpopular as fuck. And people, these Republicans, try to still, uh, you know, deflect away from the main position and the main point of the conversation. More than half the country believe at a limitation at some point that at a certain point, it's no longer your own body. That's their argument, and that's why the Supreme Court has said it's bad law, and states should have the right to will enforce the, those regulations. The, can I, can I? No, no, I'll let the okay. woman speak. Will the fetus survive if it's outside of your body? So you don't have any children, right? No, I don't. Because a baby won't survive outside of the body. No, it's relying on your body. Right. A baby survive. won't survive outside of the body, but I mean a baby delivered naturally yeah. won't survive outside. Yeah, he just like refuses to, he just refuses to make a distinction between a fetus and a baby. And he's like trying to spear dick his position into this argument here. It's very gross. It's very stupid. But the moment that you allow him to reframe the conversation around like babies, uh, you're, you're basically conceding a lot of ground there because the conversation around abortion is not about like protecting the baby or uh, killing the baby or anything like that. The conversation is exclusively around what the government is allowed to do 